bring in yeah, our guest this hour to discuss what we have seen with this cross-examination of Scott, National Trial Attorney Michael Jaffer. Michael, thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this case and this cross-examination. Finally getting into something here, this defense attorney saying and talking to him about you were spending your dad's money. This this is everything. Uh, I was riveted in the last three, four minutes. First of all, let me just say, I don't like the way that this defense attorney is following in terms of his emotion, in terms of his cadences. I don't. I think he's being too aggressive. With that being said, he's, he's, he's hitting some points because at the beginning of uh, Scott's testimony, he was very adamant. My dad didn't care. My, I was not a freeloader. I earned the money. My dad, I, I, he even had a, a, a sentence where he said, I mean, sometimes he'd ask for it. I'd give it to him two days later. Sometimes he wouldn't care. Right now, you're getting direct, direct text messages from the horse's mouth that, you know, I need my card now. I need it in my, in my wallet by the end. So he is bre breaking down some of, the, uh, some of the goodwill that Scott earned on direct examination. Um, with that being said, I'm struck by the Greek tragedy nature of this and what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a son on the stand testifying against his mom for murdering his father, where she accused him of murdering his father, and he looks just like her. He literally is the carbon copy spitting image of her. I don't think I've ever seen that before. But with that being said, I'm sure the jury has see, is seeing that as well. And this right now, I mean, up until the last three minutes, this Scott Ferris was a very, very credible, sympathetic person. He's kind of looking like a little bit of a liar to me at this point. I still don't like the way the defense attorney, just his 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 cadences in, in, in this cross-examination, but he is hitting points. Now I know what he was thinking about. He's like, you're burying yourself, no pun intended, uh, Scott, because later on I'm going to bring up text messages that directly contradict the exact relationship that you said that you and your dad had. You did not have the relationship you want the jury to believe you had. You did not have the relationship where he just didn't care and gave you a card, spend whatever you want, go golf with your buddies. That's not what you had from your dad's mouth. He's telling you specifically, I need my, he's demanding it. And you are a freeloader. And I know in his cross, in his closing arguments, the, the defense attorney is going to say, you can't believe anything he said. His dad was not, he did have a motive. And his motive was to get his dad out of the way. And by the way, he's just as big as his dad. He had more. He had the same access to his dad that his mom had. But the difference is his mom's a buck weighs a buck thirty, you know, soaking wet. She can't care. She, she's not going to be able to move Gary Ferris, but his son could. Yeah. And his son worked on the farm, and he was a strong, strong, strong farm boy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He, it's it's getting interesting to see, say the least. All right, Michael. Thank you so much for your insight. All right. Finish. We're going to bring in national trial attorney Michael Jaffer to talk about what we've been seeing so far. Okay, Michael, I understand what the defense counsel is doing here, and I think he's being very effective with what he's doing, talking about the son possibly being a freeloader, having a motive. But maybe there's some, I give my children credit cards, so I don't. I think he's making too much out of this. I think he has no choice but to do exactly what he's doing. Again, I just I wish that his cadence was different. I wish he wasn't as aggressive. He has a type of cadence and aggressiveness that you need when you're cross-examining uh, witnesses that are wearing an orange jumpsuit, like in mob trials, where most of them are serving life sentences and they have a motive, ulterior motive, to testify the way they're testifying. That's not what you have here. What you have here is a son that clearly, he, the way he emoted on direct examination, looked at the jury and cried. You have to take this one a little bit more coyly, a little bit slowly, but he has to do this. He has no choice but to do it, right? Because think about it. There were only two people in that barn that had the access and the means and the time to 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 kill Gary Ferris. It was the person on the stand and his and his client, the defendant. So he has no choice but to do this. I just wish he was doing it a little bit better. Uh, and one thing I'll say is the prosecution, obviously, in any type of a case like this, they want to put they want to paint the defendant as a villain. Man, she's she's helping them out. She's looking at the ceiling. She seems like she doesn't have time to be there. She, <laughs> yesterday, she's wearing really expensive pearls. She's she looks like she she went to you know like uh, Saks Fifth Avenue and and bought a million dollar outfit for this trial. She's really helping them out here, Kelly. She's really helping them out, and she has not emoted at all. Her son is on the stand testifying against her for killing his father. So it's crazy to me. This is a Shakespearean tragedy type situation. But uh, but yeah, the the defense attorney has to do what he's doing. And I wish he would have read more text messages. I wouldn't. Have, I would not stop. I'd make them. I'd make the judge tell me in front of the jury, "You've got to stop reading these text messages." We get the point, right? <laughs> I would want that. I wouldn't want to give them any reprieve at all. This is it. This is the entire case right here. This witness is the case. 
Yeah, one of the viewers wrote in and talked about the pearls and wanted to know, is she going to be able to bring... <laughs> Defendants, you know, <laughs> affect, and I know we don't have a lot of time, but that does matter. Oh, 100%. I, 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 it boggles my mind when defendants are sitting there with a tattoo on their face and the attorney could have told them to put some, some makeup on, cover it up. The pearls, you know, uh, she's sitting back. She seems like she just doesn't have time. It's, it's, it's insane. It's crazy. She should be leaning in like this, sitting down in front of the, her son is testifying that she killed his dad. She's got to care. So I, I agree. Michael, thank you.